So we did something really cool. We didn't think we were actually going to do it because this is our second intro because the last time we tried to go but it wasn't opened. But we went to the Corpus Christi Church in Galesburg and we got to see a mummified saint. It's so much fun. Oh, I wanted to read the cards. Where did I put the cards? So this video is going to be us telling the backstory of the saint, how it came to Galesburg because there's only 10 saints in like mummified saints in churches in what the world or in America, is it in the world? In America. In America. There's 10 mummified saints and one is just like 50 minutes away from us. So we had to go see. This was Carly's idea. She actually had a good idea for once. We got these little cards. I emailed like the church organization because the first time we went, we just got pictures of the outside and stuff like all the doors were locked but I like emailed her. I was like, is there any way like we could get inside? And we got to go. I'm so excited. I'm still excited. <laughs> <laughs> There's these little cards and mine's totally upside down. <laughs> They're like these little cards, but it says no Novena, 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 Novena to St. Crescent. Say nine times the Our Father, Hail Mary, in glory to be the Father. Prayer, Almighty God, grant we beseech thee that we who commemorate the translation of the body of thy holy martyr, Saint Crescent, may by his intercession obtain a greater love for thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Crescent, martyr of Jesus Christ, pray for us. I have no idea what that means, okay? Carly found this article on the internet about this saint, how it got here, and I read it. And while I read it, you're going to see pictures of the inside of the church, little videos that we took, and it was fun. What do you rate that experience? 10 out of 10. Same. And then we got enchiladas. <laughs> the enchiladas was a very good part. I got I was gonna say, except for the part where a bunch of people started walking in that weren't that supposed to be there. That was weird, because like we were supposed to be the only ones there. A novena is refers to nine days of prayer, asking God for a specific intention, often through a saint's intercession. Novenas are a beautiful way to grow purposeful, consistent, and persistent in daily prayer. I don't know what that means. Hello. It's touching my collarbones. <laughs> I do still want to talk about the uh, the church in general because I think it's really interesting what Carly sent me. If I can find it, that is a naked girl. I'm going back through our text message. <laughs> it's but when. So this is an article that Carly found. It's from annbender.blogspot.com. And it's called More Than Just Old Bones. And I just want to like read it um, because it has to do with the, the, it has to do with the church. I could not read. It says, when someone that we love moves away or dies, we long to keep a personal memento of that loved one so that we can look upon it with fond memories and it will become a reminder to pray for that person and perhaps to ask that person to pray for us. It's no different in the church. When someone who has lived a good and holy life has been elevated to the status of sainthood, we like to have those visual reminders that personal mementos provide us to let us know that our beloved saint will always remain with us in spirit. This is how relics can come to be a source of support in remembering the saints and in helping us to grow in holiness by turning to them in prayer. A relic is often a piece of bone, but can also be a piece of clothing or other personal item that had belonged to a saint and has been preserved and stored in a reliquary or container specifically meant for holding relics so that the faithful can venerate or honor that saint as a means to draw us into adoration of God for whom the saintly person lived their life. The word relic is based on the Latin term reliquae, which means remains. The practice of venerating its 
practiced in Buddhism, Hinduism, and Christianity. The Christian practice of venerating relics dates back to the Old Testament Book of Kings. So Elisha died and they buried him. Now bands of Moabites used to invade the land in the spring of the year. And as a man was being buried, lo, a maraudating band was seen and the man was cast into the grave of Elisha. And as soon as the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Another very moving example of the use of relics comes from the New Testament where a woman was cured of her hemorrhage just by touching the hem of Jesus' cloak. She didn't need to touch the body of Jesus or even to speak to him, but by simply reaching out to the fabric of his clothing in faith, a healing miracle occurred. Now today, we can't really claim that the veneration of the relics of saints will bring about miracles, but it can draw us deeper into the mystery of God and the lives of his saints by spending some time praying over relics and reflecting on the lives of the people that they represent. Perhaps the first saint whose relics were venerated after the time of Christ was Saint Polycarp. According to Catholic answers, the early Christians who were with him when he was burned at the stake saw to it that his remains were well cared for and they recorded the event with these words. We took up his bones, which are more valuable than precious stones and finer than refined gold and laid them in a suitable place where the Lord will permit us to gather ourselves together as we are able in gladness and joy to celebrate the birthday of his martyrdom. There are several different classes of relics. A first class relic is a part of the saint's physical body, such as a piece of bone or hair, and also the instruments of Christ's passion, such as a sliver of wood from the cross. A second class relic is something owned by the saint or instruments of torture used against a martyr. A third class relic is something that was touched to a first or second class relic. It is possible to make a third class relic by touching a first or second class relic, including a tomb of a saint, with an object, for example, a rosary or a holy card. When relics are placed inside of churches, they are kept in one of two places, in a space inside of an altar or in a reliquary, a container specifically meant for the storage and veneration of relics. In some cases, the body of a saint is found to be incorruptible or without decay. When it is exhumed, in these cases, rather than separating the pieces of bone and sharing them throughout the world, the remains of the body are usually kept whole, possibly covered with wax or silicone for protection and aesthetics. There are many famous saints whose bodies are venerated as incorruptible relics, such as St. Catherine Laborn, from whom we received the Miraculous Medal of Mary, St. John Vianney, the patron saints of all priests, and St. Bernadette Saborius, who was the visionary at Lourdes, France. Now we're getting to the church, okay? Here in the United States, there are only 10 saints whose entire bodies are available for veneration. One of these can be found in Galesburg, Illinois. And the story goes like this. Around 1838, the body of a 9 or 10 year old boy was discovered during excavations of the catacombs of St. Syracus in Rome. He suffered martyrdom at that young age around the end of the 3rd century in the persecution of the Emperor Diocletian. Diocletian? I guess. One of the fiercest persecutions of the early church. His name, Crescus was on the marble slab that covered the tomb and next to the body was an urn in which had been placed the blood of the martyr now dried. The body of St. Crescent was removed and the Holy Father gave it to blessed Antonio Rosmini, founder of the Institute of Charity or Rosminians. Father Rosmini had the relic taken to Stressa, Italy, where it was placed under the altar of his chapel. In 1887, the Rosminian father, Joseph Costa, asked his superiors if he could have the relic for the church he had just built in Galesburg, Illinois. His superiors agreed. St. Crescent's body was enclosed in a case of thin glass and fur costa, and Father Costa worried that it wouldn't make the long trip to the U.S. without being damaged. He expressed his concern to his superiors, one of whom told him, St. Crescent will take care of himself and you too. And so it happened. The relic survived intact on the railroad trips through Italy, France, England, and from New York to Galesburg. But what was more remarkable was his ocean passage. Father Costa planned on crossing the Atlantic on a ship called Alicia. 
Either because he suddenly changed his mind or because he missed the departure time, Father Costa and St. Crescent missed the boat. But the Alicia never completed the voyage and mysteriously disappeared. Father Costa, along with St. Crescent, having boarded a different ship, arrived safely. You can see the body of St. Crescent in a glass case on the right side of Corpus Christi Church. The bones are covered with wax, except for two wounds through which you can see an arm bone and the skull. You can also see the teeth of the martyr through his partially opened mouth. I think that's cool, though, that there's, like, ten saints in churches, and one of them just happens to be, like, 40 minutes away from us. Like, that is crazy. And the reason that I sent it to her is because, <laughs> is because I saw this meme on Facebook. <laughs> It was like a meme of someone that was like confused and it was like when you learn that there's a, a mummified saint in Galesburg that protects them from natural disasters. And I was like, what? Shut up. <laughs> and so I was like, what? And then I like looked it up and I guess it's like a well-known knowledge in Galesburg that they don't have any natural disasters. Like they've never been hit with anything um, because St. Crescent like protects them from natural disasters and I was like that's crazy so then I went digging for like articles and I sent that one to Abby and I was like Abby <laughs> and she was like can we do like well you were like I have an idea for a YouTube video and I was like okay does it involve you <laughs> and she was like well no but I'd like to go and I'm like okay <laughs> yeah she's like a video for me or for both of us and I was like I mean, I, I don't care either way, but I would kind of like to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you want to go without telling me you want to go. <laughs> but then I started talking to my dad about it, and my dad was like, Oh, that's the church where your grandparents got married in 1943. That was a long-ass time ago. That's 80 <laughs> fucking years, dude. And then after they got married, they took the train. Galesburg, if you don't know, is like a massive rail rail way town it was literally designed around the railroad that is why it's there but they got on a train went to chicago and for their honeymoon they watched a bears game shocking <laughs> it was the weekend of thanksgiving in 1943 sounds like your family um it is a massive freaking church <laughs> um i did not think it was going to be that big and that was just crazy I am I am a very simple-minded religious person. I believe in God and that's the that's the extent because I will send myself into an existential crisis. I'm going to embarrass myself for a minute. Last year, it was not last year. It was actually the year that my sister died. So no, it was the year after she died. I was waiting for um, an ex to come and pick me up and I was having an existential crisis to the point where I was in tears I was hyperventilating he gets to my house and he's like what's wrong what's wrong and I was like why don't I remember what life was like before I was born <laughs> and I'm like hysteric in tears sobbing and he was like you're not supposed to and I was like where was I <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, was I with God? Was I just floating in space? Where was I? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, have I don't know. And I was just like freaking out. I was like, why don't I remember? Where was I? Where do I go? Where is God? Why can't I see him? And he was like, you're not supposed to. And I'm like, is it a planet? How far up in the sky is it? Where is heaven? Why is it not an exact location? And he was like, what? How do I make this stop? <laughs> a little duct tape, a little NyQuil. I ended up getting McDonald's chicken nuggets and I calmed down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't think too deep into these things because I will send myself into a crisis and nobody needs to deal with that because she's going to be the one that deals with it now and she does not need that in her life. She's already probably going to die. I'm going to die? The omens? Because it, it went to my elbow? Oh no. Yeah, we saw two crows today. Well, I saw two crows and I was like, oh hey, I saw a crow. And then she was like, okay. And then we were going down the road like 30 minutes later, I was like, hey, 
did you see that crow? I saw another crow. And then she goes, you know crows are a bad omen, right? And I was like, oh no, what do I do? She goes, I don't know, cry. And I was like, hey, what? You're like, Abby, what do I do? What do I do? And I was like, I don't know. I'd panic in this situation. What is that dude doing? I don't know. Does he need a, is he like measuring his rope? His it's fishing line? rope? His rope? <laughs> if y'all know anything about saints and why, I, I just, a woman stopped hemorrhaging because of Jesus. What happens if I start hemorrhaging? What do I touch? I'm dead. Jesus, is that you? Actually, I did get offended. Oh, My feelings got really hurt because Jordan told me I wasn't worth $4. <laughs> And Carly said, I'm worth two goats and a handful of chickens. A handful of chickens. Okay, so I hope you liked that video. And if you do, like and comment, subscribe. And now that we know we can do these kind of adventures, we're going to be going on them a lot more. <laughs> okay, and we will see you guys in the next spooky video. Bye. Bye. Bye.